Welcome back. Uh, I'm Dr. Angela Siegel, and in this module, we will cover input and output. The goals of this very short module are to create programs that can read and process input. We will write programs that can display results. If you're following along in the book Big Java Late Objects, this will support the material found in section 2.3 of that book. You may wish, as you write programs, to ask for input, so prompt for input, um, and then save what a user enters. So in the examples today, we will be reading input from the keyboard. So we're going to ask users for input, and, and we will read in whatever they type. This is a three-step process in Java. It will require the use of a scanner class from, its, from the package java.util. So this is a package found in the Java library, and in order to use it, we will have to import it. So Java classes are grouped into packages, uh, and we'll use the import statement to use classes from the package that we so desire. So as I mentioned, there's a three-step process for input. First, we have to import the scanner class from its package java.util. And, and we do this by typing the command import java.util.scanner. And, and that brings in the scanner class. We do this right at the top of our program, even before we specify the name of the class. So just above public class, we will put this import statement. Then we're going to set up an object of the scanner class. So we have the scanner class that we can make use of, and we're going to create a scanner object from that. And we do that by typing scanner and then give it a name. In this case, I'm giving the name in, but that's up to you. Um, by default, I will always use in. And then we say what we need is a new scanner. and in the parentheses, what it expects is, where are we scanning? And a scanner is something that's looking and scanning and waiting for information. And so this will be in the background looking for information from the keyboard. And so in this case, we will tell it we're looking for system input, system.in. And finally, the third step is to use methods of the new scanner object to get input. So now we can use all sorts of uh, of methods that come with that scanner object. And uh, in, in fact, on the third line of a program, we're reading in the next integer that the, the user types. And on the final line, we're reading the next double, so the next decimal point, uh, floating point number that is entered. And so this line is used so that you can use the scanner class. This creates a scanner object to read that user input from the keyboard. After that, we're free to make use of our new scanner. So if we want a prompt for user input, you can display a prompt by just outputting to the screen. For instance, we could use uh, system.out.print, please enter your age. Now you might be asking yourself, why not print line? Uh, what would happen here is to the screen you would you would display, please enter your age, space. And then the cursor would just wait. And it would wait until they enter their user age. You can move to the next line if you wish, um, but this is a common use. Uh, so in that, that following line, we have int user age equals in dot next int. That next int method is waiting uh, for the scanner to read in the next integer. As soon as that integer is received, we stick that into the variable user age. Methods of the Java library are listed in the API documentation. And API stands for Application Programming Interface. So this is something you can go explore and see what's available to you. As I mentioned, the Java library would take forever to learn. Um, but when you decide that you need something, you can go look it up. And the way that you do that is you can go to uh, this incredible link at the bottom. You can also type um, Oracle. Uh, and javadocs search and you will find it. So there are many ways to read input and these are the ones that we will be making use of. So if we use the dot next method, what it does is it reads in the next string. So it would read in any combination of characters that it finds 
even if they include numbers, and then as soon as it sees any white space, a, a return character, a space, um, it stops reading, and then it returns that. If we use the next line method, it will read everything until it hits a new return character, a new line character. Next int reads in the next integer. Next float reads in the next float. Next double, the next double, and others. So that's it for input and output. It's a short module, but it's an important one, and we'll get to make use of this a lot. Thanks for watching. Don't string me along. What's next? Oh, strings. <laughs> that's right. Next time, we'll explore the string data type.